Hey there, welcome to Head in the Clouds. Today we're diving into Minikube, a powerful tool for running Kubernetes locally. But first, let's talk about the problem it solves. Kubernetes is fantastic for managing containerized applications, but setting up a full-scale Kubernetes cluster for development or learning purposes can be quite a task. That's where Minikube steps in. It solves the problem of needing a local environment to experiment, develop, and learn Kubernetes without the complexity and resource requirements of a full-scale cluster. Minikube allows you to spin up a single node Kubernetes cluster on your own machine. This means you can explore, play around with Kubernetes, run applications, and get hands-on experience without the need for a large infrastructure setup. Now, who can benefit from using Minikube? Developers and DevOps engineers looking to test applications in a Kubernetes environment before deployment. Understanding differences between a local Minikube setup in a production environment is crucial for anyone diving into Kubernetes. Let's dive deeper into Minikube's local setup and its underlying architecture. Minikube simplifies the process of setting up a local Kubernetes environment. It typically involves a single node cluster created within a virtual machine on your local system. The architecture of Minikube is consisted of a few key components. Container runtime. Minikube integrates with container runtimes like Docker or Containerd to manage containers within the Kubernetes environment. Kubelet. This component acts as the agent on each node in the cluster responsible for managing the containers, pods, and other resources. Kubernetes API server. It is a central management entity that processes REST operations, validates, and configures data through API calls. Kube proxy. This component maintains network roles and facilitates communication between different pods in the cluster. ETCD, a distributed key value store used as a Kubernetes primary database for cluster configuration. Minikube's architecture being a simplified representation of a Kubernetes setup, condenses these components into a single node structure. This allows for a comprehensive yet manageable local Kubernetes environment, facilitating learning, development, and testing. When it comes to deploying Kubernetes in a production environment, the architecture and setup become more intricate, designed to handle the demands of a real world workload. Let's break down what a production setup in Kubernetes involves and its architecture. In the world of Kubernetes, where all the key decisions are made, it is often known as the control plane. This is essentially the brain behind the operations, handling critical tasks such as managing the cluster states and making high level decisions. Now, on the control plane, you'll find key components such as API server, which serves as the primary point of contact for all interactions within our cluster. It's like the central command center that manages all the requests and operations. ETCD, another vital component within this control plane is ETCD. It's the memory of the system, a distributed key value store that stores all the configuration and state information. It's a bit like the memory bank that holds all the crucial details of the cluster setup and status. Scheduler. Additionally, the scheduler is part of the control plane. It's the decision maker that evaluates where new workloads or pods should be deployed in the cluster based on available resources and specific requirements. It's like the logistics manager deciding where best to place various items for optimal performance. The last significant piece in the puzzle is the controller manager, which runs various control loops to ensure that the cluster stays in the desired state. It oversees tasks like monitoring node operations and managing service accounts, among other responsibilities. On the other side of Kubernetes architecture, we have the worker nodes, the doers in the system, responsible for executing the actual workloads and tasks. Let's delve into their components, interactions, and the key aspects of a production setup. Worker nodes house essential components that keep the system running smoothly. 
The first one on our list is Kubelet, a critical agent on each node that interacts with the control plane. It actually manages the pods, ensuring they're running and healthy, adhering to the desired state set by the control plane. Another key component in work nodes is Kube Proxy. Think of this as the traffic manager for your network, maintaining network roles and enabling communication between various pods and services within your cluster. When it comes to communications and interactions within the Kubernetes system, these worker nodes continue to communicate with the control plane primarily through the Kubernetes command line interface called kubectl. It's like a constant dialogue allowing administrators and users to communicate with the control plane to manage the cluster, deploy applications, and expect resources. One critical aspect of a production setup is the network communication, enabled by something that's called Container Network Interface, or better known as CNI. This system specifies how different networking solutions integrate with Kubernetes, facilitating seamless communication between various pods and services. Deploying Kubernetes in a production environment involves careful planning, architectural design, and an ongoing maintenance. Various tools and configurations are utilized to optimize performance, ensure security, and manage the entire system efficiently. Understanding the nuances and complexities of a production Kubernetes environment is crucial for those looking to deploy applications at scale. It goes beyond the simplicity of a local Minikube setup and focuses on robustness, scalability, and reliability in a real-world scenario. Now let's jump into a demo of setting up Minikube on your local machine. Homebrew makes it easy to manage packages on your Mac, and we use it to install Minikube. If you don't have it, you can install it by following the instructions on the official Homebrew website. So if you type brew.sh, you'll find official documentation and all the commands required to install this on your local machine. First things first, let's check if you have Homebrew installed. Open your terminal and type brew list. It will list all of the previous packages installed on your local machine, or you can simply type brew hyphen hyphen version. Before we get into Minikube, it's always a good practice to make sure your homebrew is up to date. Run the following command to ensure you have the latest package information. Now, before we install Minikube, we need HyperKit, which is a hypervisor that Minikube can use to run your Kubernetes cluster efficiently. And to be able to do this, we will run the following command. Now for better visibility, let's clear our screen by pressing Command and L buttons together. Now let's use BrewList to check if HyperKit is installed. This command lists all the installed packages and we're specifically looking for HyperKit. If you see in the list, you're good to go. With HyperKit in place, let's install Minikube. You just type the following command in your terminal, brew install Minikube. Whilst it's doing the installation, you can see on the right hand side the official documentation for Minikube and all the prerequisites in order to install and run successfully Minikube on your local machine. Now that we have Minikube installed, let's check its version. For that, type Minikube version. This command tells you the version of Minikube you have installed. It's always a good idea to ensure you're working with the latest features and updates. Lastly, let's run kubectl version to check the version of kubectl, the command line tool for interacting with Kubernetes clusters. With Minikube installed, it's time to kick things off. Type the following command to start your Minikube cluster.
please be aware that this process might take up to a couple of minutes to complete, so we'll fast forward until the end. Now let's see what happens under the hood when you start Minikube. First, Minikube checks if a virtual machine exists. If not, it creates one using the specified driver. In our case, that's HyperKit. The virtual machine becomes your local Kubernetes node, emulating a small scale cluster on your machine. Next, Minikube downloads all the necessary Kubernetes components, including the kubelet, kube proxy, and the container runtime, which is Docker by default. These components are essential for managing and running containers in your Kubernetes cluster. Once the components are in place, Minikube initializes the Kubernetes cluster. This involves setting up the control plane and creating a default namespace. In other words, it's creating the brain of your local Kubernetes cluster and giving it a space to work within. To make sure everything is up and running, let's check the status of our Minikube cluster. This command will give us a quick overview of our cluster's health. As you can see here, First, it shows you whether the Minikube cluster is running or not. If it's running, that means your local Kubernetes environment is up and ready to go. If it's not running, you might need to troubleshoot or start the cluster with Minikube start. Perfect. Let's see if there are any pods deployed. Type the following command, kubectl get pods. As you can see, there are no current pods running because we've only created the Minikube cluster now. And kubectl get namespace we can see some default namespaces listed below. Now let's say you want to stop Minikube. It's as simple as running the following command, Minikube stop. The Minikube stop command gracefully stops your Minikube cluster, shutting down the virtual machine and freeing up system resources. This is very useful when you're done working with Kubernetes locally and want to conserve your machine's performance. If you want to start Minikube in a debug mode, to get more detailed information about its operations, you can use minikube start hyphen hyphen vm hyphen driver equals hyperkit space hyphen hyphen v equals seven. These flags increase the verbosity of the logs, providing you with a more detailed view of what minikube is doing in the background. And now once again, if we check the minikube status, we will see that is also running. Another useful command to learn is Minikube logs. If you want to inspect Minikube logs or troubleshoot any issues, it comes in really handy. As you can see, it displays all the logs from the Minikube virtual machine. It's really good for diagnosis problems during startup or even runtime. If you'd like to get information about the Kubernetes cluster that Minikube has set up, you can simply run kubectl cluster info. This command would display information such as the Kubernetes masters URL, Cube DNS service, and the Kubernetes dashboard. Let's check the status of our node by running kubectl get nodes. In this example, there's one node named Minikube and it's marked ready, indicating it's operational. If you'd like to see all pods running across all namespaces, you can simply do that by typing kubectl get pods hyphen hyphen all hyphen namespaces. As you can see, there's quite a few pods running in the default namespace called Cube System, such as Core DNS, ETCD, API Server, and others. And lastly, Minikube provides a built-in dashboard that allows you to visually inspect and manage your Kubernetes cluster. In order to do that, use Minikube dashboard command. This command will open a new browser window or a tab with the Minikube dashboard. The dashboard itself provides a graphical interface for managing your Kubernetes resources, such as checking cluster status and more. It takes a few moments to install all the required dependencies. However, shortly, a browser window should open with the Minikube dashboard. From there, you can explore various aspects of your local Kubernetes cluster. And that's a wrap on our exploration on Minikube, the fantastic tool for running a local Kubernetes cluster right on your machine. To stay updated and dive deeper into the world of containers and orchestration, be sure to join our Medium blog for insightful articles and tutorials, as well as our Discord community to connect with like-minded enthusiasts. 
Thanks again for joining us on this Minikube exploration. If you found this useful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more insights and adventures in all things tech.